First and foremost, we're going to talk about the display. You know, there, there's there's all, all these things to unpack. And, and one of the first things you're going to see mentioned here is that this is a triple laser projector. Now, what does that mean and how is that a benefit? Well, what's great about having these three separate lasers is we no longer need a color wheel. By using those separate red, green, and blue lasers, we're also going to get the benefit of a really bright display. And so just how bright? We're, we're talking about a picture to the tune of 2,800 lumens here on the Premier P9. Now, another great thing about using laser projection is longevity. The laser light source on this, uh, the Premier P9, is estimated to last about 20,000 hours. So you're getting a product that's going to last you a long, long time, even with uh, you know significant use. Uh, now, another thing, you know, by having the the 20, uh, excuse me, 2800 lumen um, projection, this means that you're even in daylight uh, in, in, or a well lit room, the Premier is still going to throw a fantastic looking picture. Now, there's some other factors to consider to further enhance the experience, such as projection surface or screen choice. And I do see we already got a question in here about screen choice, and we are going to get into that uh, just a little bit later. So let's continue to talk about uh, you know, some of the things that we can do with uh, this triple laser technology. One of the things that it allows us to do is recreate a much wider color gamut. So this particular model can generate 147% 147% of the DCI P3 color gamut and 106% of BT2020. Now, if you combine that with up to a 2 million to 1 dynamic contrast ratio, depending on the projection surface, you're going to get a really, really great picture. So, when a customer is looking for something that's going to give a really great cinematic experience, this model is going to be a great choice. Uh, in fact, this projector is also the first on the market to be HDR10 plus certified. Now combine that with the built-in filmmaker mode, and now you're really digging into that home theater experience. Now, if you're not familiar with filmmaker mode, this is a setting that you can enable that's gonna allow you to turn off all the superfluous picture enhancements and all the post-processing so that the picture on screen stays true to the way that the content was originally mastered. So uh, that's gonna, make sure that you're preserving the original aspect ratio, the original color, the original frame rate, et cetera. Uh, so this is something you're gonna see in a lot of Samsung home entertainment products going forward, and the Premiere is no exception to the rule. So let's talk about the, uh, the inputs that you're gonna have available on the Premiere. So here you're gonna have three HDMI connections, one of which is an eARC port. Uh, you're also gonna have one USB connection, LAN port, 802.11 AC built-in Wi-Fi. So you've got that high-speed Wi-Fi so you can do um, 4K streaming right out of the box. Uh, Bluetooth, RS-232, obviously a very important aspect, uh, and optical audio. And this one, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy that we have this here. You know, this is kind of a dying breed, but uh, we've got one RF input in here. And this this projector actually has a TV tuner. So that's kind of exciting. I, I'm, I'm really uh, really digging that we included that. Jumping over to the P7. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different. This is our single laser projector model. Now, this is still a very premium projector. You still get a really bright display. Uh, it too can be used in variable lighting conditions. It's still gonna look really, really great. Now, here you've got 2,200 lumens of brightness. So, uh, even in the, the daytime, you're gonna have that, that great display. Now, physically, it looks nearly identical to the P9, which we just covered, but they, there are a couple key differences here. So let's explore some of those. Right off the bat, you're gonna see that the, uh, the, the biggest difference is in the projection unit itself. So you're going from a triple laser setup down to a single laser light source. Uh, but much like it's higher in sibling, this laser is still rated at 20,000 hour uh, uh, lifespan for the light source. Now, what does that actually break down to? Well, let's say a customer is using you know, this an average of five hours each day, which is probably more than most people would use a projector, but let's say they're using it five hours each day. That's over 10 years of use on this one light source. So these things are designed to be durable. These are gonna last a long time. Uh, now, another thing that we've done here, most other projectors use three colors in their color wheel, but we've actually built in a fourth color, yellow. So now what you have is a blue laser with red, green, blue, and yellow on the color wheel. And that's going to be able to output a really great picture that covers 83% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. 
So you're getting a lot of coverage here. Additionally, like I said earlier, you're still getting 2200 lumens of, uh, of brightness. So you can get that dramatic home cinema viewing that's just like being in a theater. So even with a single laser, this model is no slouch. It's a really, really nice picture. So let's take a look at the inputs here as well. So this input layout is essentially identical to the P9 with three HDMI ports. Again, one of them is going to have eARC for that high quality audio pass through. So uh, if a customer wants to you know, use Dolby Atmos, you're going to have that pass through capability here with, uh, with the eARC port. Uh, you're also getting the Ethernet, the 802.11ac, Bluetooth, uh, RS-232 with an excellent con uh, connector optical and of course you still get that rf connector with built-in tuner uh, another thing that i think is kind of fun you know if you got a customer who uh, still wants ota tv they're going to be able to do that with either model of the premiere now just because these projectors are smaller than a big screen tv doesn't mean they'll necessarily have weak sound uh, we made it a point to ensure that both models are going to be equipped with really great sound so let's start on the p7 on the P7, you're getting a 2.2 speaker setup. You've got two midwoofers and two tweeters. So you're going to get a very well-balanced sound profile. And if you hear a demo of this thing, I, I really think you're going to be blown away at just how great the audio is. You see, you see a projector that's you know fairly small, and then you hear the, the audio from it. It just it, it almost doesn't make sense how good it sounds. So when you jump up to the P9, now you're stepping it up even further. Now you're getting a 4.2 setup that's also equipped with our unique acoustic beam technology. Now, if you're not totally familiar with acoustic beam, now this is a really fantastic technology that's gonna allow us to project high frequency sounds overhead. And that's gonna increase the, the size of the sound stage and deliver a little bit more of an immersive experience. Now, here's a visual breakdown on the lower right here. You're gonna see this uh, graphic. And what we've actually done, we, we've drilled 44 sound holes that are designed to perfectly project that sound up and out of the tweeters here and give you that really uh, large sound stage. Now, we do understand that in many cases, customers that already, you know, they might already have high-end audio solutions for their home theater rooms. And that's where that eARC connector comes in, right? So with eARC, they can still absolutely take advantage of those systems. However, with the portability of the Premiere, we also wanted to ensure that should a customer decide they want to move the projector to a different room, they'd still have a plug and play experience. For instance, let's say, you know, it's a really nice evening and you've got a really cool portable screen. Well, guess what? You, you can take that projector right outside, pop up the screen. All you're going to need is power. And you know, hopefully you're within the, the Wi-Fi range of your, your router and you're good to go. And, and so even when it's on the move, the Premiere is gonna give you that great experience. And that's gonna bring us to our next topic, which is design. So as I mentioned, you know, the Premiere is designed with portability in mind. And, and as far as size goes, you know, sometimes when you just look at dimensions, it, it's a little bit harder to understand it. Uh, but one of uh, one of our field marketing reps, they they actually they had a really good um, example of the size so as far as size goes it's a little smaller than one of those old vcr dvd combination players from years back i think most of us remember those right so now the nice thing is this is going to look a heck of a lot better than one of those old machines uh, you know the design is rather minimalist you've got this glossy white finish uh premium fabric covering the front so with the sleek design, the built-in audio, the built-in smarts, you know, this projector is really designed to be a plug and play solution. Now on this little footnote, you're gonna see the throw distances for a hundred inch screen. Uh, fret not, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna get into a little bit more detail about throw distances in just a few moments. Uh, so I'm gonna skip ahead to our next slide. Now, before we get into the smarts, uh, I wanna talk about startup. You know, these projectors start up really, really quick. Uh, now, thanks to the laser lighting, there's not nearly as long of a warm-up period before you can start using them. I know, you know, on some of the older projectors, depending on the light source, they can take quite a bit to, to warm up and, and really brighten up. Uh, typically, these are going to be ready to go in about 10 to 20 seconds. So you can dive right in, begin enjoying your content super, super quick. Now, as far as smart features, both models of the Premiere have our smart TV operating system, Tizen. So that's going to allow both models of the Premiere to have the same smart TV experience that our customers have been uh, become accustomed to on our TV models. So right out of the box, you're going to have access to Netflix, Prime Video, uh, Hulu, Vudu, 
uh, and many others. So just about anything that you can find on our smart TVs, you're going to find on the Premier as well because it uses the exact same operating system. Now, another feature that carries over as well is our voice assistants. Uh, so with Premier, you're going to have two different voice assistants built in. You have Bixby, which is our in-house voice assistant, but you also have Alexa. So, uh, and pardon me if I if I triggered anybody's uh, Amazon unit there. I need to make a note to myself to just say Amazon's voice assistant. So you'll have the, the choice of using either one of them. So once the Premiere is booted up, you can hit the microphone button on the remote and begin it to, you know, ask it to, to start playing Jack Ryan or ask it, you know, when your next uh, Amazon package is coming in. And you're gonna have all those uh, features built in right out of the box. Now, keeping with our smart features, we've also built in TapView. TapView is a really cool feature that's gonna allow Galaxy owners who have a uh, S7 or higher to just gently tap their phone on the front edge of the projector screen to start mirroring. Now, this is, this is a really fun feature because there's a couple different things that you can do here. Let's say you're playing a game and you want to, uh, you know, pull up a, a tutorial or something like that. You can pause your game, you can tap it, and now you've got your tutorial up on the screen and you can switch back over to your game. So it's a really, really cool function. Uh, let's say, you know, your kid wants to watch a, a TikTok video on a 130 inch screen. You can do that now with TapView. So it's a really, really exciting feature that uh, I'm, I'm glad that we built this in. And, and I think that the, uh, the the prospects for uh, having a lot of fun with this are, are are huge. So also you've got Premiere's game mode. Now this is gonna allow you to play your favorite games with really smooth motion. Premiere can use a feature called MEMC, which is motion estimation and motion compensation. And that's gonna help provide a smooth gaming experience. Now that feature, when you compound it with really, really low input lag, you get about 53 millisecond input lag, which is tremendously low for a projector you're going to have a really, really great gaming setup for your next big gaming session. Uh, and, and we all know there's a, there's a couple new consoles that launched this year. So uh, I think gaming is going to be a big focus for us as we go into the holiday season. So I want to pivot here for a second, and we're going to talk about screens because this is one of the questions that comes up quite a bit. Uh, so I want to briefly talk about the preferred screen pairings for Premiere. Now, we don't necessarily recommend any particular brand or anything like that, but we do want to talk about the types of features to look for in a screen to pair with, uh, with Premiere. So to maximize contrast, Premiere is best paired with an ambient light rejecting screen, but specifically ones that are made for ultra short throw projectors. Now, you'll sometimes see that abbreviated as you see on the top left uh, of the screen here, A-L-R-U-S-T. So uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but you do have to be careful because there's a couple of different types of ambient light rejecting screens and they're all designed to reject light from different angles. That's why it's important to get an ambient light rejecting screen that's designed specifically for ultra short throw projectors. Now, the reason uh, that, that you want that, if you look at the graphic on the left, it might be a little hard to make out depending on the size of your screen, but essentially you're gonna see a bunch of right angles on the surface. Uh, what this does is it allows the projector to reflect light back to the viewer while overhead light is either blocked or absorbed. Now, these surfaces tend to look a little bit darker than regular matte screens because of this reflective angle, but it also helps give the picture a much, much greater contrast, which you'll see, you know, a bit of a dramatization here on the right. Uh, but when you see this in, in real life and you see what the way that the, uh, the picture looks on a UST screen versus, you know, a regular matte screen, it, it's, this is a pretty accurate representation of what you might experience. So uh, we definitely recommend an ALR UST screen. Now, in addition to the screen surface, there's also the screen type to consider. So there's no shortage of screen types out there. You've got fixed frame, roll up, et cetera, but there's one factor that we highly recommend for all of the, uh, the Premiere uh, screens, and that's tension. So tension screens are extremely important because it will minimize or eliminate warping. So with ultra short throw projectors, the angle of the projection is part particularly sensitive just because of that, uh, that angle that it's being projected from. So if you look at the graphic here in the middle, you'll see that any warping in the screen because of how short the throw is from the projector to the screen itself can actually cause an off angle reflection and that distorts the picture. And because of that, you wanna have as flat a surface as possible and that's where a tension screen comes in. So a tension screen is gonna ensure a much flatter surface and that can either minimize or completely eliminate warping. Now, perhaps the question we get more than any other 
is how far does the projector have to be to get X size screen? Well, there's gonna be a couple different places you can find this. You can find this on samsung.com on the product page under support, but more importantly, you can also find it on our custom installation portal, samsung.com forward slash custom install. We'll have uh, the links here in just a couple moments. Uh, you're also gonna find these specs for mounting. Now I do want to note, both models use the exact same mounting dimensions. These are found, uh, if you don't see them on the, uh, the install portal or anything like that, these are actually gonna be in the manual, which is available on the product page on samsung.com. So uh, both of these are gonna have the exact same mounting dimensions. So 235 by 135 millimeters uh, with M6 screws. Now let's jump down to, uh, well, actually let, let's, let's talk about the, the throw distance for a second here. So you want a 90 inch screen with a P7 you gotta be 9.7 inches away. Uh, if you wanna jump all the way up to 120 inch screen, you can do that from just 16.3 inches away. So pretty impressive throw distances. But when we jump down to the P9, this can actually sit much closer to the wall and accomplish the same, if not much larger screen. So to get a 100 inch screen, you only have to be 4.4 inches away from the wall. To get that 130 inch screen, you only have to be 9.37 inches away from the wall. So this is, uh, this is you know, really, really impressive that we can sit this close to the wall and still throw a really, really huge picture. Uh, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, this is gonna use the exact same mounting dimensions as the P7 as well. So 235 by 135 uh, with M6 screws. And uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some of this info available after the fact as well. So if you are uh, seeking specific resources for custom installation, we do offer access to the custom install portal. Now, this is only gonna take a few minutes to sign up. Approvals are usually processed pretty quickly. Uh, this is where you can find all sorts of resources that are gonna help simplify installation and, and make selling Samsung even easier. So all you're gonna have to do is fill out the short application form. The approvals are processed pretty quickly, as we said. Now, once you're in, you can go to custom integration. You can click on resources, which you'll see on the top left. And on the left column, you have all sorts of different filters here. So you can filter by specific resource type, like spec sheet, uh, dimensions, firmware updates. Now this particular graphic doesn't, uh, doesn't show the Premiere in there, but uh, the Premiere has been added into this portal. This, this graphic just predates that. So you will find that here as well. So you can find all of our resources on uh, custom install for the Premiere. Now, beyond the portal, we also have two numbers that are immensely useful. And I wanna pause here for just a couple of moments. Uh, we have our tech support line and our dealer service hotlines. Now, these are going to be for basic troubleshooting needs and additional dealer support. But I do want to pause here uh, for a few moments. So, you know, you can take this information down. But I also want to pause to see if we have anything coming in on the Q&A pod that we can answer here. Uh, otherwise, we can always address it in a follow-up. So let me uh, check the Q&A. looks like we've got quite a few here. Jason, is there anything that uh, stood out to you that you uh, think we should share with the greater group here? Jonathan, no, I think we're good. The questions have all been pretty simple and all answered. Perfect, perfect. All right, well, let's continue on here. And we are almost through the, uh, the presentation this morning. My slides decide to, there we go. All right, so now let's say you have a specific uh, tech question that regular dealer support might not be able to answer. Uh, well, your clients can also turn to uh, Braun Consulting. Let's say there's a custom install and something just isn't working. You know, system A doesn't want to talk to system B. No matter how many times you try to iron out the bugs, it just won't work. Uh, Braun Consulting would be a really great resource here. They've got over 30 years of experience in this category, and they are specialists in, in all things related to controlling Samsung products. Ultimately, we want to ensure that we arm you with all the right resources to make Samsung an easy choice. So this is a, a really great avenue to uh, to leverage, you know, if you do run into any issues here. So that is our overview of the Premier lineup this morning. Uh, I'm going to leave the session open just so we can gather any other Q&A items that might come in that we uh, can either follow up on after the fact. Uh, but with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining. I'm going to pass it over to Gary to see if he has any closing remarks as well. Uh, Gary, let me throw it back over to you. 
Uh, yeah, great job, guys. I, I love these abbreviated sessions. We can all go out to work right now. No, um, great presentation. I just want to make it very clear that, um, and I think that where you started the video, that would suffice. I will get this video. Uh, Jonathan and I will, will package everything up and get it as soon as we possibly can back to you guys. So you can reference this. I was taking pictures, and that's something I always I hate to do because I want to get this back to you guys on your desktops. But primarily, Braun, yeah, I've worked with Braun a lot. Uh, that great resource there. You know, I wanted to throw out the slide about um, your screen selections and 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 kind of what the dealers need to look for there. Jonathan, you're aware of what we all kind of cover or carry, I should say. Um, you've got you've got uh, uh, daylight. You've got you know a number of different things. I'd like to maybe ask uh, any dealers out there. Do you have any specific questions on screen options we have to our expert panel? You know, just to kind of zero in on it. Anybody have any problems? Anybody have an existing screen that they don't know if it's compatible? Things like that might try to drum up some questions. Anybody, uh, please please ask that. Um, also, earlier we had uh, mounting questions. You you covered mounting there too as well. Uh, I, I took a picture of that slide. Is there any other additional mounting questions specific to uh, what might be in the field, a job you're bidding on right now that you can ask the experts, Jonathan or Jason right now? Uh, just laying it out there. Or, or guys, gentlemen, you could elaborate. So we're looking at the uh, the Q and A uh, portal here. It doesn't look like we've had anything come in specifically on those quite yet. Let's see. We have had somebody ask about acoustically transparent screens. Now, being that this is a front projector. Um, I, I don't really have any comments on that, uh, just because it is a uh, it is not set up for rear projection. Uh, so in, in this case, you wouldn't necessarily, you know, depending on how you have your audio set up, um, I'm not sure. You know, that, that's definitely a question I think that would be better handled, Gary. If, if you're a little bit more familiar with, uh, if you have acoustically uh, transparent screens that work with ultra short throw. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, as far as specific screen uh, recommendations, you know, from from Samsung's standpoint, we don't have any specific screen partner. Um, that's where we're really going to ask you to, you know, lean on uh, lean on the, the resources that you have here by uh, from from Volutone and yeah. Snap AV. Uh, so that that would be our. our uh, our suggestion is to definitely lean on on the expertise internally, just because you know from from a manufacturer standpoint, uh, we don't necessarily want to say we recommend brand X or brand Y. Of course, we have, we, we, yeah, I, yeah, we have to kind of toe the fine line. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we all know it, and and that's why I like about this forum. You know, it's all of us. I, I, I if sure, that's why I try to say I try to preface it by, hey guys, if you've got a, a certain screen that you love and you just don't know if it's compatible, hey. Shoot out the question now, but yeah, it is. It's screens. It's it's mounting solutions. It's the the kind of the behind the scenes stuff that these guys obviously want to throw questions. But hey, um, if your questions are answered and we feel good about it, hey, th those things look great. I I can't wait to to really uh, continue to this launch in a successful manner and and get this stuff out. I know um we've got a lot of uh, a lot of reaction on uh, on the West Coast from from this as well. So we're looking forward to it. I think it's a great option. Uh, I loved how you talked about the sound. Uh, Looking forward to this, man. So, guys, keep the questions going. We still have a, a few more minutes with our expert panel. Jason, anything that you can elaborate on? Or have you been busy asking or answering all the questions back there? I've been trying to get to all the questions as they come through. There's a lot coming in yeah. about uh, stuff that Snap may carry in the form of screens. Um, okay. A lot of stuff Dragons, you guys just talked about. Et cetera. Mounting brackets. <clears throat> okay. Good, and I, that's I love that because that's exactly what uh, my sales staff is going to get hit with. Um, I, let me ask, uh, Dragonfly questions as well. I've not seen any specifically on that. Okay, cool. I'm going to have guys um, who's ever on this. You know, I'm going to continue some projection pr projection themed trainings coming up. I'm I'm definitely instituting a more commercial themed uh, training. Uh, segment through Q1. So guys, um, if, 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 this, if this is something that you were wanting out of the discussion on short throw and projection, 
there's going to be some more trainings I'm building right now uh, going down that that general field. So look forward to that. And I'll, you'll see that in my marketing coming up. So we did get a couple of good questions. Uh, so I have actually two or three people ask about uh, IP control. Uh, so this does support IP control. So you're not limited to just RS-232. You do have IP control options available as well. No, yes, first, from here it can be mounted to the ceiling. That has come up a couple times as well. Yes, uh, and, and you can adjust the the angle. So once you set up the, uh, when you do the initial setup of the projector, um, there's a, a lot of different uh, calibration settings. So depending on how, you know, the the angle that you have, it's it's not gonna be, uh, you know, drastic to where, you know, you don't wanna angle the projector too much, uh, but you do have some some ability to correct the uh, the skew of the projection. Still looking through some of the questions here. Looks like we got most of these addressed. I'll tell you what, folks, we're gonna leave the Q&A pod open here and we'll continue to answer them as they come in. And uh, let's see, Robert asked, variable refresh rate or auto low latency mode? So Robert, um, you know, one of the things with projectors, the refresh rate is a little bit different because of the way that they, they actually project the image. So our game mode does, uh, it does something a little bit different. That's where that MEMC comes in, the motion estimation and motion compensation. That's gonna allow you to have a little bit of a smoother experience, but it's also going to significantly reduce the input lag. So that's almost like your low latency mode, right? So uh, the input lag will be dropped to about 53 milliseconds. So uh, this is one of the fastest uh, input lags on you know, just about any of the projectors out there right now. So uh, we're, we're pretty, pretty proud of uh, that, that number, that 53 milliseconds. We've had a uh, question come up again. Are, are there brackets for ceiling mounting? So, um, you know, the the mounting dimensions are going to be available on Samsung.com. If you look under the support section for the products, you'll find the mounting dimensions. So just depending on um, what type of mount you are using, uh, typically with ultra short throw uh, projectors, they're going to be mounted to the wall just because the, the distance that they need to be. Uh, from the projection surface. So you don't necessarily wanna have it you know, mounted all the way in the middle of the ceiling. So uh, you could still technically call that a ceiling mount, but it would need to be pretty close to the wall. Uh, so it is absolutely capable of doing that. And uh, all those dimensions uh, will be available on uh, samsung.com. All right, well, good interaction so far. Uh, yeah, again, a lot about mounting. I did go back to the questions. I did see the ALR questions there, Jason, regarding SNAP. Thank you for answering that as well. Uh, guys, um, you know, again, dynamic product here. The typical questions that we've expected, you mentioned a couple of different resources there, Jonathan, that I can at least take and, and uh, put links on onto the, the, the correspondence that I get back out to these guys. Over the next 24 hours with the video, um, I'll go through the website as well. Um, and uh, the addition to Braun on there uh, for contact information, et cetera. Um, guys, well, uh, if we're gonna wrap it up, I don't see any more questions. Jason, are you still typing away? How you doing? He's typing away. Uh, everything is good over here. Jonathan, can you want real quick, just run through uh, uh, the MEMC real quick one more time? I think there was one more question I saw about motion. Yeah, so let me uh, let me jump back a couple slides, and I'll, I'll jump to the one that has the MEMC. So MEMC. Now this doesn't really give you a visual breakdown of what that is, but MEMC is a type of interpolation. So motion estimation and motion compensation. Essentially, the the processor that is uh, in the the projector will be able to look at the frame that it just played and the frame that's upcoming. And it can actually insert a frame in between. So you're gonna get that interpolation to really smooth out uh, your gaming experience. Now, uh, we've had a couple other questions come up that ask about frame rate. 
And projectors are a little bit different. You know, they're not measured the same way that uh, that televisions are when it comes to frame rate. So we don't have any uh, specifics to share there, uh, but we can say, you know, uh, you see these things in action and man, they look great. Awesome. Michael Forbes was asking, I don't know if you hit him with this question, but uh, he didn't see the support site. Uh, where on the support site are these projectors? I'll make sure that we've got a, a link there, but. Yeah, so so all you have to do is go to the product page on Samsung.com, almost as if you were shopping for the projector. Uh, so when you pull up the Premiere, uh, let's say the P9, for example, if you go to the Premiere P9 uh, webpage on Samsung.com, on the top left, uh, well, I guess kind of top middle, you'll see a link that says support. And when you click on that, you'll have the, uh, the link to go to the uh, uh, manuals. Got it. All right, All right, guys. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah, you know, fantastic job. Listen, everybody um, who's still remaining, Jonathan, Jason, how about we do this in four hours? You guys game? Sounds great. Yeah. I mean, let's Jason do it. Jason may again. not be able to join us, but hey, I'll, I'll be here. So. All right, Jonathan. Hey, that's that's West Coast time for us. That's 2 p.m. Uh, that's that's 5 p.m. East Coast. So uh, please, if you need to bring a beverage and let's do this Twilight style, we're going to see you guys in four hours. We're going to do the same presentation. But uh, most importantly, if you're at a job site right now, you want to send a link, um, you'll find the link uh, where we, uh, where, where you found this one as well. But get it to your team members. Uh, let, invite back your staff or, or whatever. Let's continue the conversation in a few hours. Jonathan, great job. Um, looking forward to it again. Maybe a whole new round of questions and, and interest there. Um, but from all of us from the Snap AV locals, our partnership with Samsung is, is tremendous. Uh, love working with your company. We use your products regularly uh so thank you for your time and attention to the snap av locals that's volutone that's custom plus that's mri and that's all net uh together we make up a great network of brick and mortar and and guys that are truly there for our dealers uh you drive up and and ask your questions like i said everybody's busy be safe out there most importantly We've got a few more uh, weeks until, you know, again, the end of the year blitz. So um, we're here for you. This is a great choice in short throw projection. I'm uh, really excited about it. We're going to get some assets for you guys together and uh, let's sell some projectors, guys. What do you think, Jonathan? Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. All right, good. All right, guys. I see that Michael Forbes found it on the web. There you go. You're set to go. All right, guys, we will be back. Snap AV Locals and Samsung, uh, uh, the premiere. Another session in four hours. We will see you guys soon. Again, be safe. Thank you so much for your business. Let's go get December, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you all.